I'll take you through the basics of the Xerox Work Center 53 series. We'll start with an overview of the device, how to load the feeder and paper trays, change supplies, clear jams, followed by how to navigate the control panel and its functions. So copy, scan, fax, and the address book. So feel free to skip ahead, but let's get to it. The document feeder on your device holds 110 sheets. You'll load it face up, or if you're choosing to use the glass, load that paper face down in the back left corner. We'll skip past the control panel to go to the paper trays. You should have four in the front here. There's a bypass tray on the left. I'll open up tray four. It'll hold eight and a half by 11, as will tray three. Just make sure you don't fill them up past the max line when filling them. Trays one and two will hold larger sheets. If you want to move those green guides, just press those clips together, move them out. Just make sure that when you press them up against the paper, they're flush. Every time you open and close a tray, uh, it will ask you to confirm the size and type. So if you need to change those settings, there's a change settings button. You can tell it it's pre-printed, labels, whatever you want. Just save it. These settings then make sure the device treats the paper correctly using the right speed, heat, and electricity. To change supplies, you'll open the front door. Uh, it just flips down. There's two supplies here. We'll start with the toner. Uh, simply slide that out. Um, it's pretty easy to remove. Uh, basically, there's a little black arrow that shows you which way to insert it. Um, but once you push that in, you're all set. Uh, the drum is to its left. Um, you're going to want to open the left-hand door. It's going to be marked with an A. Uh, you'll grab that gray handle, open it up. Now you'll easily be able to slide that drum out. Uh, you'll dispose of it, grab the new drum. Um, you'll unwrap it because it's light sensitive. Uh, quickly put it in um, and then close that left door and then close that front door. To remove a jam, I'll follow the on-screen instructions to one of three possible locations. If I open up door A, here's the first one. Uh, there's a fuser here. That's what heats up the paper and toner so they stick. Uh, you'll just take the paper out there. If it tells you to on the screen, you'll go down to uh, the, uh, the second door near the bottom left there. Again, just, just take that paper out. We should go up to the feeder too. If the original is jammed there, there's a little latch. Just open that up, take the paper out. Pretty simple. Um, no matter what though, I always recommend just, just look at the screen. It'll tell you where to go, whether it's in the feeder or in the, the left-hand side. You can just grab it from there. The best way to prevent jams is to combat the environmental effect of static and humidity. So if you simply fan the paper before loading it in a tray, the sheets will have less of a reason to stick together or get stuck. You see the control panel and screen here. To get to your functions, you're going to press the Silver Services Home button on the top left. Um, you can press Job Status to see past and current jobs and Machine Status to see faults and supplies. As we move to the right, you're going to see your number pad. Uh, that big green Start button is how you're going to start your jobs. And if you need to clear the settings, you can press the yellow Clear All button or Stop to stop that job. To make a copy, press the Copy button from Services Home. You'll see the menu here. You have Reduce and Enlarge on the left, then Paper Supply. Uh, if you look to the right, you're going to see your two-sided options that you can select. The number on the left is the number of sides on the originals, and the number on the right is the number of sides you want on the copies. Um, all you got to do is just select whichever setting you'd like to, to use. There's other tabs up top. Uh, there's image quality, like lightening and darkening the copy. Um, most of the time, though, uh, you won't really be in these menus. You'll mostly be in that, that main copy menu in the top left. So again, all you have to do is load your original, select your number of copies from the number pad, and then press that green start button. A quick tip if you're trying to copy small documents, um, when you put that small original down on the glass, you put it near the, the back left. Before you press start, simply select one of the eight and a half by 11 trays. It'll then understand that it needs to copy to a normal paper size. To scan to email from services home, you'll press the email button. You can add a new recipient manually or press the address book on the left hand side. Here you're going to see your list of uh, entries that you have put in already. There'll be more here, uh, but you'll just select your name, press two and then press start. Now, if you want to change some settings before that, go ahead and press close, and then you can edit color, two-sided, original uh, quality settings. You can also customize the subject here on the right, but the basic steps are 
load your originals, select your recipient, edit the settings if needed, and then press start. I'll now show you how to scan multiple sets of originals individually, but then have them combined into one file. So you'll load the feeder of the glass, press start, then press next original. This will pause the scan so you can scan more. So load originals, press start, load more originals, press start. After your last original is scanned, press last original, and then all the scans will combine into one file. To send a fax from services home, you're going to press the fax button. From here, you'll just simply type in the number using the keypad on the right. Um, if you have to dial a 9 or a 1, a prefix, uh, that depends on the phone line. Um, but if you've uh, saved any names in the address book, go ahead and select address book on the left. They'll be listed there. Select them, just add them to the list of recipients, and then press start. The easiest way to save fax numbers and email addresses into the device is through its web interface. You access that by typing its IP address into a web browser. Uh, then you can click address book up top. You'll click add new name on the left hand side. Here you'll see the name, the email address, the fax fields there. Just type in the person's name. If it's an email address that you're trying to save, obviously you're going to then type in the email address and then the fax number below. Now, you want to make sure that if you're saving a fax number, you add the prefix, the number you dialed beforehand, so 9 or 1, into that. But then you just press save and close, and then you repeat. No need to type in any of the other fields, just name and then email and or the fax number. It'll be helpful to save this website as a favorite in your internet browser. Uh, you can also create a shortcut on your desktop if you prefer that. Um, you'll right-click on an empty area, select New, and then Shortcut from the menu. Here you'll just copy and paste the web address, like so. Click Next, and then you just type a name for the shortcut, like Xerox Address Book, and then Finish. So that'll create a, a little icon, a shortcut there. So when you click that icon, you'll be able to jump right back in the address book, and you can add and edit your, uh, your recipients.